I used a lot of the material when I was doing my dissertation at university. Um, it was on the Second World War and people's opinions. And I discovered that it still existed. And I thought, oh, that would be great if I could use, you know, my opinions would be useful to historians in the future. And they use, I think, you know, a sort of level of people of different ages and genders and backgrounds. And they did need someone of my background. So I was quite pleased that they accepted me as an observer. They try and use topics that they did at the time to get a comparison to, you know, 50 years later or whatever, and also topics that are really big at the moment. Um, so the most recent directive was about immigration um, and changes to the high street. And then sometimes there's things that, uh, like social history researchers now have wanted to um, gain information about, um, you know, whatever they're researching, that kind of thing. So there's sort of series of questions sort of to point you, but it's quite a free writing. Sometimes it's difficult to articulate how you feel about quite sort of controversial issues. Um, you know, you have to sometimes, you know, try and think about well, how you think about that, because sometimes there's not things that I would necessarily think about. Um, and sometimes if it's quite personal things about spirituality and things, it can be quite hard to sort of articulate that. And sometimes you just don't have any experience or knowledge or opinion about some of the topics. It's very, it's very open-ended. I mean, sometimes for a directive, I'll write a page and it'll be things like, you know, I, I don't know enough about this, but I often feel when they ask me things that I shouldn't look it up because I think it should be about what I already know. And I feel like I shouldn't look up, you know, the European constitution because if I don't know about it, then that's cheating in a way. But sometimes I'll write a lot more if it's something that I'm interested in or I've had a lot of exposure to. If you don't believe in something or if you haven't had any experience, then I think that's still quite useful information. It hasn't affected everybody. So I think usually they would like you to say, you know, this just this hasn't been part of my life. I think photography could play a much bigger role than it does. Um, I think it's a really good way of backing up what you're saying. Sometimes it wouldn't it wouldn't be as easy to do it because of the things that they talk about, but some things really would benefit from it. Um, like a recent directive on the high street, I think it would have been good to get people to take photographs of the high street and send them in. Um, I think it used to be a bigger part of mass observation and I think it could have could come back and that would be quite valuable. I think the most interesting thing has been making me think about how I view things and making me articulate things that I wouldn't necessarily think about in my everyday life um, and about how I you know, people will see my period of history in the future. And I'm interested also in how the public sees the project, because I don't think it's something that I wouldn't necessarily have known about, and, you know, whether people think it's a worthwhile thing to do still.